Hi everyone. Welcome to Simply Learn's YouTube channel. Business analyst interview has both analytical thinking and the ability to translate business needs into actionable solutions. Employers look for candidates who can bridge the gap between business goals and technical execution. These questions typically cover key areas like requirement gathering, process modeling, stakeholder management, and data analysis and documentation techniques. This collection of business analyst interview questions and answers is designed to help you prepare confidently covering fundamentals and real world scenarios along with the reasoning behind each answer so you can demonstrate both technical understanding and strategic insight during your interview that's it if these are the type of videos you'd like to watch then hit that like and subscribe buttons along with the bell to get notified whenever we host also just that you know if you want to upskill yourself master data science and business analytics skills and land in your dream job or grow in your career then you must explore simply learn's course of various data science and data analytics programs these programs offer live sessions on latest ai trends such as generative ai prompt engineering explainable ai job assist help you get notified by top hiring companies hands on projects across data analytics life cycle and generative ai and much more through our courses you will gain knowledge and work ready expertise in skills like data ethics data analytics sql python tableau power bi generative ai and over a dozen others that's not all you also get the opportunity to work on multiple projects led by industry experts working in top tier data and product companies after completing these courses thousands of learners have transitioned into a data science or a business analyst role as a fresher or moved on to a higher paying job and profile if you are passionate about making your career in this field then make sure to check out the link in the pinned comment and description box below to find a program that suits your experience and areas of interest so without further delay let's get started with the agenda for today's session in today's video we will be learning about three sections of interviews firstly beginner level interview questions followed by that we will have intermediate level interview questions and answers and lastly we will cover some advanced level interview questions and answers so i hope i made myself clear with the agenda now let's get started with a small quiz what documents capture functional and non functional requirements of a project your options are a business case b requirement traceability matrix c business requirement document or brd for short and lastly user story please leave your answers in the comment section below so now let's get started with our first question what is business analysis so this might look like a basic question but your answer should impress your interviewer so you can answer this as business analysis is a practice of identifying business needs analyzing challenges and recommending data driven solutions that deliver measurable value it involves understanding how an organization works its objectives and strategies required to improve process or systems a business analyst acts as a liaison between stakeholders and technical teams ensuring that proper solutions are both technically feasible and align with business goals this discipline plays a vital role in digital transformation and decision making process across the industries now let's move ahead to the second question what are the key responsibilities of a business analyst now you can answer this question as a business analyst's primary responsibility is to ensure that business objectives are clearly understood and properly translated into actionable insights typical duties include gathering and documenting requirements analyzing data to identify trends and bottlenecks designing process improvements facilitating stakeholder communication and validation of final deliverables against expected outcomes in agile projects bas also write user stories define acceptance criteria and collaborate closely with product owners and developers to ensure continuous delivery of value now let's proceed to the third question for today's session what are main phases of sdlc where a ba is involved the answer for this question is a business analyst contributes throughout the software development life cycle or sdlc for short so some of the major parts are requirement gathering you need to understand and document user needs next is analysis phase evaluate feasibility and prioritize requirements followed by that we have design phase validate that design solutions meet the documented needs next we have testing phase support qa teams in validating requirements 
through test cases. Next, implementation and maintenance. Participate in user acceptance testing or UAT for short and monitor post-deployment performance to ensure business objectives are met. Let's go to the next question. So the fourth question is, what is a requirement? The answer for this question is, a requirement is a precise statement describing what a system, product, or a process should accomplish. It acts as a foundation for design, development, and validation. Requirements can be categorized as follows. First one, business requirements, high-level goals or objectives of the organization. Next is functional requirements. Specific features or capabilities of the system must provide. Followed by that, we have non-functional requirements, quality attributes such as performance, security, or usability. Next is effective requirement documentation ensures clarity, prevents misunderstandings, and serves as a baseline for testing and future enhancements. Now, let's go to the next question. What are functional and non-functional requirements? So. The answer for this question is as follows. Functional requirements define what the system should do, such as the system should allow users to log in using two-factor authentication. Now, non-functional requirements. So these, on the other hand, describe how well the system should perform these functions. For example, response time, scalability, or security level. Both are critical. Functional requirements ensure capability, while non-functional requirements ensure performance and user satisfaction. Now we have our sixth question. What is the difference between BRD, SRS, and FRD? So the answer is, each document serves a different audience and a level of detail. BRD, or also known as Business Requirement Document, captures overarching business needs, objectives, and high-level expectations. It is often written for stakeholders and business sponsors. SRS, on the other hand, System Requirement Specification for short, converts business needs into system-level requirements covering both functional and non-functional aspects. FRD, which is short for Functional Requirement Document, provides a detailed description of how each function will operate within the system. It operates as a reference for developers and QA teams. Together, these documents ensure traceability from business goals to system implementation. Now, we have our seventh question. What is a use case? The answer is, a use case illustrates how a user interacts with the system to achieve a goal. It defines steps, conditions, and outcomes in a structured format. For instance, place order use case describes how a customer browses products, adds items to the cart, and completes payment. Use cases are valuable for clarifying user expectations and help developers visualize functional behavior before developing begins. Now, our eighth question. What tools are commonly used in business analysis? The answer is, business analysts use a combination of tools for documentation, visualization, and analysis, such as Jira and Confluence for agile backlog management and documentation, MS Visio or Lucidchart for process mapping and flowcharts. Then we have Miro for online collaboration and brainstorming, and Excel, SQL, Power BI, and Tableau for data analysis and visualization. These tools collectively help BAs to gather insights trace requirements, and improve collaboration across teams. Now let's go to the next question. Ninth one, what is stakeholder analysis? The answer is, stakeholder analysis involves identifying all individuals or groups affected by project, assessing their interest, influence, and communication needs. For example, end users may require usability updates while management might prioritize ROIs and KPIs. Effective stakeholder analysis ensures balanced decision-making and reduces the risk of misalignment during project execution. Now, let's go to the last question in beginner's section, the 10th one. Describe a typical day in a business analyst's life. The answer is, a BS day usually begins with reviewing project, progress, and meeting stakeholders to clarify requirements or gather feedback. The document requirements, analyze data to identify patterns, update user stories or flowcharts, and coordinate with developers or QA teams to resolve queries. Throughout the day, they ensure deliverables stay on track, communicate findings to reports and dashboards, and prepare the next sprint or milestone. Now with this, let's go to the intermediate section. And that brings us to the 11th question. How do you handle conflicting requirements from stakeholders? The answer is, conflicts arise when different stakeholders have competing priorities. I address this by following. 
first one, understanding the root cause of each viewpoint through interviews. Second one, facilitating joint workshops to discuss trade-offs and align expectations. Third one, prioritizing based on business value, feasibility, and risk. Fourth one, documenting agreements to maintain transparency. And this structured approach ensures alignment while maintaining trust among the stakeholders. Now, let's go to the 12th question. Explain the concept of a requirement traceability matrix or RTM for short. So an RTM is a document that maps each requirement to its corresponding design development and testing components. It ensures that every requirement has been addressed throughout the project life cycle and helps in impact analysis when changes occur. For example, if a requirement changes, the RTM quickly identifies which test cases and components need updates, preventing missed dependencies. Now, let's go to the 13th question. How do you perform gap analysis? So, the answer for this question is, a gap analysis compares the current state as is of a process or system with the desired future state to be to identify areas of improvement. The steps include documenting the existing workflow or system. Second one, defining the future state goals. Third one, highlighting gaps between the two states. Now, fourth and the last one, recommending solutions to bridge those gaps. For instance, if the as is process takes five days for approval and the target is one day, automation of workflow redesign should be proposed. Now, let's go with the 14th question. What are some common requirement elicitation techniques? The answer is, effective elicitation ensures complete understanding of stakeholder needs. Common methods include the following. Interviews and surveys for individual feedbacks. Workshops to gather diverse perspectives. Observation, watching end users perform tasks. Prototyping, which demonstrate mock-ups or clear feedback. Document analysis for reviewing existing manuals or reports. Choosing the right method depends on stakeholder availability, project complexity, and data sensitivity. Now we have our 15th question. What is the difference between Agile and Waterfall from a BA's perspective? The answer is, in Waterfall, the BA gathers all requirements upfront and changes are difficult once development begins. The BA role is documentation heavy. In Agile, Requirements evolve iteratively, allowing flexibility. The BA collaborates daily with developers, writes user stories, and participates in sprint planning and retrospectives. Agile fosters adaptability while Waterfall focuses on structure. A skilled BA must adjust accordingly. Now, let's go to our next question. How do you ensure requirement quality? Now, the answer is, I apply validation and verification at every state. Requirements must be smart. To expand, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. I also use peer reviews, stakeholder walkthroughs, and traceability checks to ensure completeness and consistency. Additionally, defining clear acceptance criteria ensures that QA teams test against measurable business expectations. Now, we have our 17th question. Describe a challenging project and how you manage ambiguity. So, before you answer, remember of a situation where you faced it personally. For example, in one project, requirements were unclear due to evolving client expectations. To manage this, I conducted frequent brainstorming sessions and iterative prototyping to visualize ideas quickly. I maintained a living document to track changes and sought early validation after each iteration. This approach minimized rework and ensured continuous alignment between stakeholders and the technical team. Now, let's go to the 18th question. What is a data flow diagram or DFD for short? So the answer is a DFD illustrates how data moves within a system. It identifies sources, processes, data stores, and outputs. For example, in an e-commerce process, data flows from customers to order processing systems and then to inventory and billing. DFDs help identify bottlenecks, redundancies, and opportunities for automation before development begins. Now we have our 19th question. How do you prioritize requirements? So the answer is, I use techniques like Moscow, for short, must have, should have, could have, and would have, and Kano analysis to rank requirements by their business's impact. Now, additionally, I assess factors such as ROI, cost, risk, and regulatory compliance. This ensures that high-value features are delivered first while maintaining strategic alignment with project goals. 
Now, let's go to the last question in the intermediate section. What are KPIs and how does a BA use them? So, the answer is Key Performance Indicators or KPIs for short are measurable metrics that evaluate how effectively a project or process achieves its objectives. Examples include customer satisfaction rate, process efficiency, and defect density. BAs use KPIs to track progress post implementation, ensuring that the delivered solution contributes to tangible business improvements and ROI. Now, let's go to the advanced section. And that brings us our 21st question How do you approach data analysis for business insights? The answer I start by defining the problem and identifying the right data sources whether from CRM, ERP, or databases. Then I clean and transform data using tools like SQL, Excel, or Power BI to ensure accuracy. Then I perform trend variance and correlation analysis to uncover patterns. Finally, I present my findings through visual dashboards that support informed decision-making. This data-driven approach helps stakeholders optimize operations and forecast outcomes effectively. Now, 22nd question. Describe how would you model and optimize a complex business process? The answer, I use business process modeling notation or BPMN for short to diagram the existing as is process, highlighting inefficiencies such as delays or redundant steps. Then I collaborate with stakeholders to design a 2B process, incorporating automation, streamlined approvals or system integration using metrics like process cycle time and cost per transaction. I validate the improvements, impact, and document process KPIs for continuous monitoring. And now we are on 23rd question. How do you use SQL as a business analyst? So the answer is, SQL is an essential analytical skill for BAs. I use it to extract, join, and aggregate data from multiple sources. For example, querying customer order histories to identify top performing products. I also use SQL to validate data integrity, perform ad hoc analysis, and feed insights into visualization tools like Power BI or Tableau. This technical capability strengthens my ability to make evidence-based recommendations. Now we have our 24th question. Explain how you work with developers and QA teams. The answer, I collaborate closely with both teams to ensure seamless communication and requirement clarity. For developers, I translate business needs into our user stories, workflows, and acceptance criteria. For QA teams, I review test cases and ensure they align with business rules and assist during UAT. Regular spins, reviews, issue tracking, and documentation updates help maintain alignment throughout the development life cycle. Let's go to the last question of today's session, which is give me an example on how you measure project success post implementation. So before you answer this, take a situation where you face this. Let's say we consider a scenario. In a process automation project, I measured success through key metrics like reduction in manual effort, faster turnaround time, and user satisfaction. For instance, automation reduced approval time by 60%, saving approximately 25 hours per week. I compared post-implementation KPIs with baseline data and presented results in a performance report that demonstrated tangible ROI and improved customer experience. So that was the last question for today's session. And with that, we have reached the end of this session on Business Analyst Interview Guide. Should you need any assistance or any other resources that we have used in this session, like PPT or others, Please do let us know in the comment section below and our team of experts will be happy to assist you at the earliest. Until next time, thank you for watching and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn.